Creating realistic landscapes and environments in Blender often involves the challenging task of making mountains, rocks, cliffs, and peaks. I know from experience that creating such organic elements of nature is a process that demands extensive 3D knowledge and requires a lot of research and reference gathering. Fortunately, in today's video, I will be introducing you to a new Blender add-on that will help you save time and sanity when working on large-scale environments. It is simply called Mountainscapes, which is an asset library that contains a collection of over 150 ready-to-use 3D assets. From what I can see, this offers you a variety of environmental elements like snow-covered mountains, different rock formations, cliffs, green and tropical mountains, peaks, ravines, plains, and so much more. You can use these assets to create natural landscapes that correspond to any given time of the year, since you are provided with multiple assets for different seasons and biomes. I should probably reassure you that this asset browser comes from the same creators of Gobo Light -like Textures, as well as other popular add-ons like Grass Blade for realistic glass and flowers, in addition to Cloudscapes, Population, and Vegetation add-ons, just to name a few, from a developer known as B Production, which are highly respected in the Blender community for consistency and delivering high-quality add-ons that are guaranteed to make your workflow better. The mountains provided are photoscanned from actually real-life mountains, meaning they exist somewhere on the planet. This also means that they offer a high level of detail and accuracy, making it possible for you to get 3D renders that are indistinguishable from real-life footage, which can be really useful, especially for VFX projects. And well, given that these models are essentially 3D representations of real-life mountains, it makes using these assets as background elements a very viable solution. However, if you intend to utilize them for close-up shots and highly detailed renders, it's not very advisable, as the primary purpose of this library is to create large, realistic landscapes, not for close-up shots. Okay, now let me tell you how to set up this asset library if you are not familiar with the process. After you navigate to Edit and Preferences under the Find Paths, you're gonna want to hit the plus button to add the location of your Mountainscapes Blender file, which comes when you purchase the library. Now you're set for dragging and dropping these assets onto your scene. Just add a new window containing the asset browser panel, and by accessing the Mountainscapes library, you should be able to see everything that is offered. Now, the first thing you will notice is that the library contains two main categories, splitting your assets into two types, classic models and HD models. Let me tell you about the classic models first. These assets are low poly and optimized models of over 108 different elements, which are grouped under seven subcategories, which are snow, green, Mount Rushmore, Monument Valley, rock, and finally Santorin. What I think is so neat about these low poly models is that they are equipped with 8K image textures containing an incredible amount of detail, and they utilize the regular PBR format, meaning you get the classic setup for albedo, roughness, and normal maps. But this is not everything. These micro models are also equipped with micro displacement maps, which adds another micro level of detail to your objects. So this eliminates the need to have super dense geometry that could potentially slow down your machine and increase your render time. So you can choose to use these models if you are especially concerned about performance. On the other hand, you have high poly models. The high poly models use very dense meshes that offer great detail, which simply cannot be compared to the micro displacement maps. You will get over 44 total HD assets that are categorized under three different types, Mount Rushmore, Monument Valley, and Santorin. This library provides a diverse range of options, which can be great for different projects. However, it is important to note that these dense meshes may strain your system's performance and potentially can cause Blender to crash, so use them with caution. But in my opinion, despite all of that, opting for SD models instead of low-poly models can significantly enhance the realism of your scenes. So it comes ultimately to what you are looking for and the needs of your project and the strength of your machine, of course. So guys, if you are interested in this add-on, you will find all the necessary links in the description. 
I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.